Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. Now, as an as a marine biologist, I go rock pooling a lot and I'm out on the field a lot and I carry this red bag with me pretty much everywhere I go when I'm rock pooling. And with it being spring and summer coming up soon, everyone's gonna be rock pooling a lot more. So I thought I would share from someone who has gone rock pooling probably thousands of times in their lives, what I take rock pooling with me and what is in this rock pooling bag. Mm. So I'm going to split this up into certain parts. First of all, we're going to talk about the basics, the minimal stuff you need to go rock pooling. And then we'll work our way through to maybe if you want to go filming rock pooling, what to take. And if you want to be prepared for anything, what the master rock pooling level can bring with you and fit all inside a bag. So really the only two things you absolutely need to go rock pooling are a pair of wellies and a phone. I can't show you my phone because you're being filmed on it right now, but basically a pair of wellies will mean that you can step in rock pools, it protects your feet, and you can go in and see the awesome creatures. Wellies are absolutely fantastic and probably my favourite type of shoe, unsurprisingly. Now you also want to take a phone for safety and let people know where and when you're going rock pooling. I have a video all about how to go rock pooling and how to stay safe while rock pooling, which you can see here. Now, this is the bare minimum, but we're in the UK. In fact, right now it is raining and about five minutes ago it was sleeting. So if I'm talking slightly fast, it's because I'm just hoping that the weather holds out long enough for me to film this video. So I would add one more onto the kind of essential basics where it's up to you to bring them, but really I always do. And that is a pair of waterproofs. Not only just a waterproof jacket so that you can stay nice and dry, but also these amazing things, which are inside out apparently. One second. You need a pair of waterproof trousers and this basically means you can wear these and water won't get on your clothes and that's really handy because if you're lying down on a rock pool even if you're not in a rock pool it's nice and damp and sometimes if you get waterproof trousers with good enough like like um, seals at the bottom almost you can put them under your wellies and it can kind of give you a bit of breathing room if you step into a rock pool that's too deep you've got a few seconds that your waterproof trousers will protect you before your wellies get filled and you have to do the rest of the rock pooling trip completely soaked i get i always get completely my wellies always get full of water every time i go rock pooling but i think that's just because i can't help but jump in the rock pools so now let's get on to talking about kind of what the additional stuff that you can take with you rock pooling it's not essential if you don't bring these things you can't not go rock pooling but they make it more comfortable and if you've got room in your bag then something you might want to think about packing so along the same lines of the clothes of waterproofs and this is what i carry with me right now in summer i don't bring all these things but right now it could literally snow at any point or be 18 degrees i it doesn't it doesn't know what it's doing so i bring with me a hat and gloves as well as my cap of course um cap because i love caps and but also because it helps with the sun and i don't have to wear sunglasses and this because it can get really really cold especially if you're outside for long periods of time even these to chuck on at the end of a rock pooling session to warm up in is really handy you also have to kind of prepare for what if you accidentally get a bit too wet and fall in or maybe not fall in but like get colder than you want to be it's always good to have something nice and toasty and dry importantly to put on after i also bring these gloves which are neoprene gloves so you wear these and these give you a thick layer of material that helps keep your hands warm now they don't keep your hands dry so i wear these in when it gets cold and i can't physically put my hands in but i won't wear them any other time because you still get wet it just gives you longer until your hands completely freeze and you have to really no longer put them in because they're so bright pink that i think they might fall off so <laughs> this delays that 
as well as um, do I hat and gloves, I also pack spare clothes just because sometimes I get really, really soaked and I have a long travel time back, so I just bring a pack of spare clothes. I wouldn't necessarily say you need to keep this in your bag. If you go by car, maybe just having a spare change of clothes in your car so that you're not damp and wet all the time is going to be really handy. A new addition to what I bring with me rock pooling this year, especially because it's cold at the moment, is this hand warmer. My hands get super, super, super cold um, in in the rock pooling water. So after I uh, finish rock pooling, it's an electronic hand warmer and you just kind of heat up your hands and it warms it up for you. This is really good. I wouldn't bring it with me all the time, but while it's freezing and super cold, this has been a lifesaver once I finish rock pooling. I should also speak about the bag itself. Now this isn't an essential purchase, you can still go rock hauling without this type of bag but when I say about keeping things dry, this bag is absolutely incredible for it. Um, I'll post the link below of what it is but there's lots of bags like this and they're basically some really good plastic that you then take and you roll up at the top and clip together. And that means that this bag is completely waterproof and anything I keep in here is super, super dry, which is gonna be really handy when we get on and talk about electronics. But before we talk about that, I just wanna say that to also keep warm and uh, just as a nice addition to rock pooling, I sometimes, especially in spring and winter, take a nice flask with me. It's really nice to sit and have a nice cup of coffee or tea uh, while you're rock pooling and just help warm your hands up with the nice warm lid and, um, and, and and be nice and toasty inside so if you can fit that in your bag I would recommend it this is going to be like Mary Poppins where I keep bringing things out have I got a lamp in here? you have to wait till the end of the video to see and along the same lines as that as well I also pack lunch with me I'm not going to show you that it's different every time you can pack whatever lunch you want but I go rock pooling for hours and hours on end, so I like some fuel to keep me going. And uh, yeah, so I bring some lunch too. So let's chat about the different electronics that you can take with you or might want to take with you, as well as your phone. If you've got something like an underwater camera, then that's fantastic to take and capture things rock pooling. Obviously not essential, but for me, who goes rock pooling and films it, then it's 100% necessary for me. And just super, super fun. The camera I have is an Olympus TG5 Tough. It is my absolute favourite camera ever. It is just perfect for rock pools. It lets you zoom in up close. And I've got a video where I first used this that you can check out here where I talk about it a lot more, but this is a fantastic purchase. I keep my camera inside a, a thermal sock, you can get a nice case for it, but it's just a handy nice way to protect the lens as I'm uh, travelling around and in here. In Scotland it can get so cold sometimes, or a lot of the times of the year, that my phone will just switch off, and that's not very good. Um, so I need to make sure that I always have a battery pack with me and a charger. But this is really handy for anyone really because if you're rock pooling for a long time you want to make sure you've always got battery and especially because I use my phone to record I need to keep charging it and so always having a way to charge that is really handy. So I always pack a power pack and a charger um, to make sure that my phone's always got full battery. I bring with me a little uh, bag that's, that's uh, full of like electronics, so batteries and SD cards, just in case I need to change them. It's not really necessary to go rock calling, that's more of a camera thing, but I thought I'd show you what I take. If anyone wants to take fantastic pictures or get good angles or take their camera with them and uh, set it up somewhere, then I highly recommend getting something called a gorilla pod. Now this is a tripod but it bends and you can put it over rocks and at different angles and so I can attach this anywhere on the rocky shore and use it to film, and set up time lapses or just get some really awesome camera shots. So this is really, really handy. Mine's a Joby, I think there's different types but this is a really, really good um, tripod stand and I, I've used it around and in salt water for years and it's not really ruined it at all, which is really surprising, so big. <laughs> no way! Oh my god, that's, that's never happened before. I think it just popped back in. Oh 
okay. I've not broken it. That's funny. It's one for the bloopers. Two very different things and something that you don't have to bring. It's not really rock crawling related, but more related to the fact that you're spending a wonderful day outside at the beach. And that is for me my nature journal. If I find anything interesting or the need takes me, I can sit down and draw. I like to sometimes make sure that I set aside some time to sit down and draw after a recording session. Especially in summer when my clothes can dry out, I like to sit there and sketch. But I can't resist taking it with me every time, just in case there's just some sort of fantastic arty thing that I need to draw. In Scotland, at any moment, if you're near the coast, you could probably see a humpback whale, an orca, or more likely some seals and a pod of dolphins. So I always have with me my handy pair of binoculars, which aren't really, I haven't actually used when I've been rock crawling because I'm mainly just looking down in rock crawls. But one day, when there's a dolphin off at shore, I'll be able to see it up close and personal. Um, so I bring that just in case. Related to rock crawling, these couple of things that are going to be really handy. Some of them I haven't brought with me. Not everything I take with me every time, so a couple of things I have left at home, but I will put up a, a video clip of one of those. But it is some sort of form of, I suppose, catching or looking at something. So a clear Tupperware tub is really handy if you want to see a species and look up close at it because it's clear and you can have a nose. Um, I've used this in a video recently about flatfish, which I will link to here, and you can see just how effective it is seeing those amazing juvenile fish swim. But that can take up a lot of room in my bag, so I don't often bring it with me. So when I can't fit that in, I bring this, which is a silicon baking tray. And you can put species in here and have an, a close-up look, but it squidges down really tight and tiny so that I can squidge it in my bag if I need to take it. So this is what I didn't bring with me, and that's because I like to take pictures and ID things when I get back. But if you want to know what's growing on the shore when you're there, which can be fantastic, and you're curious and want to know different things, this is the Collins Complete Guide to British Wildlife. It's one of the best books you can take with you. It's not massive, it's not particularly heavy, and it's really durable. I have taken this with me everywhere. It looks a bit tattered, but you know, it's, uh, it's surviving well. So if you want a, a basic guide to what you can find rock pulling, this is really good, and I recommend taking this with you. If you want to see other awesome books for IDing things, I have a video on that. And I also have loads of videos on books for marine biologists. So if you're interested in learning a bit more about books, you can go check out that video. So I hope you enjoyed this video um, and I hope you found this informative of what to take rock crawling. If you have any tips or tricks and you take anything with you that you can let me know then that will be fantastic because I'm always looking to improve and make it more comfortable and more great but this is uh, what I have streamlined over many 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 uh, rock crawling trips and I have found best to work uh, that I have found best to work so I hope that helps you all and uh, it looks like the sea is telling us it's time to go because uh, otherwise we're going to get washed away. And even with a waterproof bag, uh, that's no fun. So I will see you next week with another video. Bye everyone.